All right, what's up? We're live. It's a live stream. I know it's a weird time for the live stream. Usually, I um, usually I do these a little um later and on the weekdays. So I don't know who's gonna show up to this. I don't know. It's a very last minute thing. I just have a pile of mailers stacking up, and I figured I would open them and chat with you guys. And if there's five people, we'll have a nice intimate session. If there's five hundred, that would be a huge shock. But let's see what happens. Yeah, no sh first one in. First one in, last one out the club. Um, I digress. What's up? Welcome, welcome. We got some records to open. Um, 11 p.m. Very glad with the early time. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna call this live stream. This is my this is my give back to my my European friends um, who always miss the live streams. This one's for you guys. Uh, I need to show some love, so that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, we got Luke's here, Terry's here, Thomas, nice, Miles, what's up, dude? Mike Red, sweet, yeah, so as usual with these live streams, I, uh, the people trickle in more over time, um, inevitably people will miss the beginning, but this will be on the page for anyone to see, um, after the fact, which might be to detriment of my channel growth, because I'm sure people watch like 10 minutes and tune out, which is like YouTube saying, oh, people watch six percent of your videos so no one likes your channel um but that's okay i've given up on trying to beat youtube i cannot figure out how to succeed on the platform so i'm going to hope that what i've built thus far will be a beautiful thing in conjunction with the record store um speaking of the record store tomorrow's the big migration of the records and various um furniture i guess to the store um my whole living room is just boxes if you saw my instagram i did a video um and i got more in my garage it's like it's gonna be a long day a very long day but um it's exciting to know that everything will be in the store it'll feel more real once everything is migrated over there so that's exciting um but let's talk about that later and let's open up um some records shout out to magdalena bay for this sweet uh hat I picked up on their tour. They just uh, came through Portland. It was fantastic. Um, before we start, if you guys could do me a favor and just hit the like button on the stream, that would be awesome. And it would uh, allow for the stream to get possibly shown to music fans who might be able to discover it and learn about this guy. All right, so you guys know the drill. I'm going to open up a bunch of records. If you have a, a burning question for me, feel free to drop me a super chat, and I will then answer the question to the fullest of my ability. Um, otherwise, let's just let's just get into it, folks. This looks like, um, hmm, what did I order from them? Oh, I know what I ordered from them. This was actually, this is something that I think, you know, was this you that posted this? It was either you or you commented and said that you love this. And then Nick Rud Rudo says he loves this too. Um, I was unfamiliar with this. As uh, Contrary to popular belief, I don't know every bit of music that's ever existed, even though I like to pretend I do. And it's always a joy to discover music, especially music from other generations that uh, has eluded me and then falling in love with it. And I heard this record for the first time a couple weeks ago, maybe a week or two ago, and I was blown away. I love when like music like this is so randomly just like tucked into the history, the annals of history, and um, it gets discovered down the road. But this is now getting a pretty wide reissue campaign. This is Rupa Disco Jazz. Um, so this is uh, they say it's a halfway point between Bollywood and Balearic. Um, it's just like a a really incredible dancey um, like jazz album with elements of music from her culture and it's just like it's so it's so enjoyable to listen to like i would i would easily throw this on at a party uh, like a dinner party um it, this is absolutely like an anytime any scenario kind of album and i'm really stoked that they're doing uh reissues it's on sun sugar vinyl so let's take a look at what that looks like um but yeah if you guys like um any kind of disco music, um, highly recommend. It's just, it's so, it's so fun and, and it's a uh, heartfelt. Um, and she, look how, look how sweet she looks. Look at the sweetest, sweetest human being. Um, but yeah, Numero Group did this reissue and they tend to do quite a good job with their reissues. I have, I have full faith in them. Um, 
not as varianty as I had hoped. We're missing. It's it's kind of a weaker. I've seen better pictures of this variant online. Mine, uh, you know, when it comes to getting haze or splatter or smoky things, like it's gonna vary copy to copy. And mine is light on the green, but I do think it's a very pretty variant. Um, and I think um, I'm excited to give this a spin. Um, I listened to it digitally, and it was a, it was a joy. So I can only imagine the um, the vinyl pressing sounding even better. Um, and I've actually heard that the vinyl pressing does sound great. So excited about this. It was affordable. Um, if you like, like I said, if you're into this idea of like, like you know, disco jazz from this era and this part of the country or this part of the world, um, definitely get this now. I have a feeling like the original copies of this record go for hundreds, four or $500. So recently there's been reissues. I feel like if those ever sell out, knowing Numero Group, they do tend to... Um, they do tend to repress their stuff more than other labels, but um, I, uh, I I would get it just in case it doesn't get a repress because you know it's always it's always a crappy feeling to to sleep on a on a record and be like oh it'll get a repress and then it never does. Um, all right, we got 40, 50 people in here for a random unplanned uh, live stream. So thank you guys, thank you for joining me on this uh, this Saturday. We only got 17 likes though, so can we get the like police in here to make sure everyone's hitting the little thumbs up button? Thank you. All right, let's see what's in this mailer. There's a record that I was hoping would come in by the time I did this live stream, but it's not showing up till Monday. It is, um, without spoiling what it is, it is one of my grails from this year uh, that I was able to track down. And I'm, I'm a little hesitant to think that it's, uh, I feel like there was a chance it might not be the right pressing, but we will find out. All right. This is a record that I was recently turned on to, and it is lovely. Um, it is very unique. And it's signed by the band, which is so cool. Look at that. Love it. I love when there's a, a big band and they all sign us. This is Squid, um, Bright Green Field. So <clears throat> the way I would describe Squid, it's almost like if Talking Heads had like a baby with, like LCD sound system. No, that's not right. It's just kind of like, it's very like manic. I'm trying to think of how I describe this to a friend of mine, but it's like, it's, you know, it's a, uh, it's experimental while still being catchy. Um, you know, a lot of talking parts, a lot of like, you know, catchy hooks, um, a little proggy at times. It's, it's a very unique album. Talking Heads is the most immediate kind of association i had with it when i first listened to it but i don't really know like what would you guys for those who are getting excited in the chat right now um what what would you guys compare this to because i am i'm struggling to reach like a a concrete comparison um i feel like i texted my friend about it let me see if i can pull up what i said because i think that was pretty succinct let's see Yeah, I can't find it. Oh, well. Um, talking Heads if they didn't take their Ritalin. <laughs> yeah, it's very manic. This is a very arguably challenging listen. Um, there are some very catchy parts of this album that are like accessible for anybody. But there are some parts that even for me are a little difficult. And I feel like with time, as, as I get to know this record more, um, I will um, get to appreciate even the more challenging segments. But yeah, there's really no one doing it like them right now that I can think of. There's another band that's kind of similar to them um, that came out recently uh, called Yard Act. Uh, also very Talking Heads, LCD sound system, kind of manic energy. Um, I'm actually seeing them in Portland at my favorite venue out here, which is the Doug Fur Lounge. I'm seeing them um, with my buddy Drew. Uh, and I'm excited to see their, their UK stylings translated to a, a live show. Terry with the first super chat. Thank you so much for supporting. Always. I mean, you're the best. But any targeted date on the TMR store opening up? Yes. Uh, I do have the date picked out. And this is pending, of course. My hope is that I can get everything done by this date. Um, uh, you know, this Sunday everything's getting into the store. And from there it's going to be a lot of late nights trying to price and build and organize and decorate um i'm going to officially announce the date middle of april in a video where i talk about the grand opening and kind of what i have planned for it who's going to 
be playing like band wise. Um, so I won't say the date yet, but I will say that it will be in May and it'll be on the later side of May, but I won't say the date yet. So look forward to that in a video in about two weeks. And John is here. What's up, man? Thank you so much for the super chat. All right, let's, uh, let's keep going. We got a lot to get through. What's happening here? Is this some vaporwave thing I ordered and forgot about? Did I even order this? So this is a vaporwave label called Leak Spin Records, and I don't remember ordering these. I feel like I saw this one up for sale and I, I thought about it, but maybe I ordered it. It's just three vaporwave records, as you can tell by the covers. I don't have anything to say about them because I don't know the albums. So I'm going to have to double check my orders and see. Maybe they just sent it to me. I don't know. Who knows? Oh, Tyler's here. The recent Super Chat King. Welcome. Um, congrats on the shop. Thank you, Tyler. Always appreciated. Um, so yeah, I don't have anything to say about those records. I apologize. But let's keep going. Stop. Let's see. This is out way too far. I feel like this could hurt somebody. Namely me. Um, I'm hoping I can do live streams from the store once I'm there getting stuff ready. Um, I haven't tested the internet there yet to see the quality of it, but hopefully I can. I think that would be super fun. Ow. So this is... Snow Allegra, Temporary High in the Violet Skies. Um, really great modern R&B artist. I think on this album, she works with Tyler, the creator. Yeah, Tyler um, on two tracks, actually. Um, this is a really well-produced album. Um, it's very enjoyable. A lot of people are saying it's not as good as her first two LPs. Um, I picked up the Black Marriott months ago, and they just reissued this one. It's on purple vinyl, so I grabbed the purple for the collection. Black one will probably go in the shop. But uh, yeah, this if you don't know Snow Allegra, um, she's wonderful. And unfortunately, her uh, I have a copy of her first LP, which is maybe my favorite of her albums, and the pressing isn't great to me. It's a little noisy. Um, hoping they do a proper repress down the road that's a little less noisy. But yeah, so this is great. I'm excited to get the purple to match all the purple on the cover and my hat. There you go. There you go. This is a big box. What do we have here? How does one open this box? Oh. This is <clears throat> yet another version of um, Bo Burnham's Inside that um, I had to have my friend order for me because I am still not allowed to order from Urban Outfitters. <laughs> but this is their eggshell white vinyl. I'm trying to collect, variant collect for all of these. Obviously, you guys know um, Inside is one of my favorite things ever. Bo Burnham is someone I've been a fan of for over 15 years. Um like a huge fan, and I think this is one of the most important art pieces of my lifetime. I think it's extremely impactful and relatable and relevant, and he's a genius. So I wanted, I felt the need to variant collect. I think there's only four variants right now, and I believe I have them all. Um, but yeah, if you haven't taken the time to sit and watch Bo Burnham's Inside, I highly recommend you do so. It is, it is a revelation, and if you haven't watched it by now, that's that's crazy because everyone has pretty much watched it. I feel like, but. This is my call to ask you. The Rudy Librarian, why can't you order from Urban Outfitters? That is a very great question. Um, you should watch one of my favorite videos on the channel from a few years back. Um, if you sort my videos by most viewed, it's definitely in the top 20. Um, I have a whole video about why I'm banned from Urban Outfitters and it's ridiculous. The story is absurd and it has not been fixed since. So um, go check it out. You know, I don't want a soapbox here. I'm not going to soapbox, I promise. But I've been doing this for seven years, and there are so many good videos in the archives. If you are you know, caught up with my recent videos, I would encourage you to go 
back and check out some older ones. Like if you sort by most viewed, it probably shows you most views. It probably shows you ones that did well over the years. Um, there's some really good ones from like 2016, 17, 18. Like go check them out. They're still, they still, I'm proud of them. They still exist. Um, some of them are still relevant. So go check them out. Um, Tyler with the super chat, Cole, Nas, Drake, Tyler, yay. Who gets the Grammy? Certainly not Cole. Um, I mean, I, I guess I would say Tyler from that list. Um, but maybe yay. I mean, I really liked Donda. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I, I am who I am, but Tyler's album, I like Donda more than Tyler's album, but Tyler's album is probably a better album. I don't know. It's a hard question to answer. Thank you for the super chat, Rydak12. Am I still using the Onzo Zero Dust? If not, how am I cleaning my stylus these days? Um, it's a great question. I've never used the Onzo. I actually use the DS Audio. Uh, a little more expensive. It's a J Japanese company. Um, but it's the same concept. I'm worried that the, you know, I'd, I'd be concerned that material would have the same issues as the Onzo. So I haven't actually, um, I haven't used a stylus cleaner in a, in a little while. I haven't heard a need for it. Like my stylus seems pretty clean. My, I haven't played anything super dirty. Um, but I would like to find a solution. I was actually looking into the ultrasonic uh, stylus cleaners, the ones that you like put it on the pad and then you like shine the light on it and you press the button. Um, I'm curious if those work or if it's actually just like snake oil. I don't know. I would love to see a video review from someone in the community that's um, used it. But I, yeah, I'm looking for a good stylus cleaner. And everyone, a lot of people say, use the magic eraser, but I've heard that that strips your needle. So um, I'm, I'm hesitant. I wouldn't want to risk stripping my clear audio needle if that is true. It may not be, but I don't want to risk it. Um, hey, Tyler again. Those are the nominees for best rap album. Why are we nominating J. Cole for best rap album when he puts out forgettable after forgettable record? Anyway, that's a whole... That's a whole thing. Um, oh, Wizard of Loneliness here. My man, I just talked about you in the last live stream. Uh, no, not the last live stream. The last video I did where I was talking about purging the collection. I was going through my to listen to stack and I talk about Divine Beats and I said I want to keep it. So you should definitely go check that out. Um, all right. Yes, cool. This was, a, this was a pretty cool Discogs find. It's so... This is um, Gilberto Passos Gilmorera. Definitely didn't pronounce that right. So this is like a, a Gilberto Gil uh, box set um, from Brazil, from Polygram. Uh, the problem is, so this is um, one, two, three. It's four discs of music. Um, some of them are, yeah, there's just like a ton of different songs from him uh, collaborating with people and doing all kinds of things. The problem is um, this was missing one of the discs. So the other discs are apparently near mint. So three of the four discs are in here. Normally this box set with all four discs goes for like easily triple digits. I got it for like 25 bucks and I told myself, you know what? It's missing a disc, but it's not meant to be. It's a compilation. So that's okay. I'm fine with that because this is a really awesome acquisition for 25 bucks. I'm Gilberto Gil is one of my favorite Brazilian artists, like top five without question. Um, and just to have um, three discs of music of him working with Caetano Veloso and Gal Costa and um, all these like legends on here, it's like it's definitely worth missing the one disc. And you never know. What if one day I find at a record store the missing disc? You know, that's like the exciting part of records. You can always like cobble together a set every now and again. No love for the first super chat you sent. Did you send one, Frank? Hold on. Did I miss it? Oh, man. It, it blended in with Tyler's. I'm so sorry, Frank. Frank Weichman, folks. The man, the myth. Mostly the myth, but also the legend. Um, it is good to see you, my friend. Um, I wish you would come back to Portland and hang out with me and get some beers at Prost. Um, you purged some records. I'd love to hear what you purged. Uh, let me know after the fact. Um, all right. You guys are, you guys are, are being very generous with the super chats tonight. I appreciate that. Um, 
as I as I sit here and I'm hemorrhaging money opening this store, I just found out that I might need to get a permit to replace the image on the sign above the storefront, which is going to cost me another couple hundred dollars uh, that I didn't expect. And the, the sign itself is going to cost like thirteen hundred dollars. It's just like opening a store. You learn there's a lot of uh, a lot of fees associated that you didn't plan for. Um, but hopefully this will all be worth it. Um, all right, we still got some more to open. Let's let's keep let's keep the train rolling, as I say. I see some questions I want to answer, but let me uh, let me get through these records, and then and then we'll do some questions. Unless you super chat, and then I shut up and answer. I do as I'm told. Oh my goodness, I ordered I ordered this ages ago. Holy crap. Whoa, I didn't know it was a foil jacket. That's cool. This is the classic Tenacious D record. Um, they're self-titled, featuring hits like Wonder Boy and Tribute and um, Explosivo. It's just, this is such an iconic record from my youth. Um, the amount of times I've been intoxicated at parties singing tribute or an, and wonder boy from high school and college um karaoke it's just i just love tenacious d and i never picked this record up i don't know why um and i love that the vmp did this really nice kind of foil cover i think that's such a nice touch um to really tribute the anniversary edition of the d so glad to own this. Hopefully it sounds good. Lately, my VMP re uh, releases have been hit or miss sonically. Um, so I guess we'll have to see when I spin it. I will check the Discogs notes ahead of time to know what I'm in for. But um, very impressed with the packaging, which is, you know, that's, uh, that is step one. All right. Let's hold that here. Almost one. Almost in one. One day I'll, I'll figure this out, guys. One day. Hey, Nikki, what's up? Welcome. What have we here? Oh, I've been waiting for this. The Bon Iver, Bon Iver self-titled 10-year anniversary pressing. Um, I owned the red pressing many years ago, many years ago, probably like 2016, and it didn't sound great, so I sold it. Um, I have heard mixed things about this one. I've heard it sounds better than the other versions, but I've not heard if it sounds great. And this is such a, a lush, sonically beautiful, um, just like unbelievably gorgeous, um, this album is just like it's transcendent there's almost nothing like it and it really deserves a high quality pressing hopefully this is the one we deserve um but first before i put this beauty down tyler has hit me with another super chat the sc king is the store everything i was looking for is there something i wish it had that other places had is there something it has i love that others don't those these are killer questions tyler all right so i wish that it had better foot traffic the area it's in is not extremely walkable it's on a busier road so that's a little bit of a disappointment but that might be the only downside um plus side is that it is only a one-year lease with renewal options which means that i'm not locked into like a five-year thing in case the store just doesn't do like i hope it will um and there's also a parking lot which is really nice um so there's a lot of pros of this space, and I really think it'll be a great destination record store. People will have to come by for events and you know make it part of their trip when they are planning to record shop that day. I'm excited. Um, Nick is hitting me. I, I trust Nick implicitly. He's saying it might be better, but it's not great. Why can't we just get a good pressing of the first two Bon Iver records? Like, what is why are we asked? Like, that, that's not a big request. I don't understand all this like 2000s indie stuff that's supposed to be so beautiful, like the National Records and Bon Iver, and we just get these like average pressings. Also, Kanye Records. He's a musical genius who's obsessed with sound and production, and yet all of his records are afterthoughts, and they all sound average to bad. Um, it just blows my mind. Like we, these are legendary albums that will they will stand the test of time. Why can't we get them 
as audio file pressings. It just, I don't understand. Vinyl is no longer a fad. It is like a real thing that's back. It's tangible. Let's actually give a crap about what we're making, right? Like it, it doesn't make sense to like keep just like farting out all of these like average issues. It, it's stupid. But that's maybe an entire video worth of commentary that I won't share with you guys right now. This is kind of a crappy packaging, I think. Oh, I've been waiting for this one for a hell of a long time as well. This is, oh man, it's like, it looks like the, uh, like it's like bulging out a little bit, like the top. Anyway, this is Mass Effect, the trilogy vinyl collection. Mass Effect is a formative uh, video game series from my lifetime. Um, a trilogy of epic space action and drama, um, a really charming cast of characters, and most importantly, really epic music. So excited to see this box set. Hopefully it sounds good. Um, this is one of those soundtracks I could probably throw on in the background and be really satisfied. It's not a necessity to be sitting in the game and to enjoy the music. I feel like it's something that transcends it, which I, I look for in video game soundtracks. It's either going to be something very nostalgic that will like trigger that like part of my brain, or it'll be something that stands on its own as its own kind of like either electronic or down tempo or ambient type record. And, and this definitely stands on its own. It's really, really iconic music. And um, yeah, there's some little bit of creasing on it, but that's okay. I'll survive. It'll survive. Um, all right, what do we got next? Oh, this is awesome. So, if you guys don't know, Rhett Madison, Pin Up Daddy, this is her first record on vinyl um i remember i saw her perform years ago in la at um i think it was hotel cafe and she blew me away very awesome songwriter and um she's continued to make music ever since then and um this is pin up daddy her latest release uh, i think she did it through crates and i'm very excited to give this a listen i you know i've been following her career and um, I think she's definitely going to um, continue to make some great stuff. I actually have abstained from listening to anything from this record. I wanted to spin the record first. Um, I don't know if it's colored vinyl. Let's take a look and see. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's so cool when like you see someone at a tiny venue and then like they continue on and find success and they make a record. It's like a very, you know, it's like I feel like I'm part of the journey even though I'm not. Um, so, first of all, soft touch matte cover, very nice. Um, I was hoping it was this color. I was hoping. So, really nice hue to match the cover. Um, yeah, excited to hear this. If you guys haven't heard her, definitely check her out, Rhett Madison. Um, I, uh, I think you guys... I feel like this album came out last year. Let me double... Does this have the... doesn't have the... Um, doesn't have the date on it, but yeah. So check her out. Um, always nice to see more musicians um, put out records that I've seen live. All right. What have we here? What, what have we here? Oh. <laughs> This is a Ho FX. This is a, a No FX release that just came out. Uh, original copies of this 10 inch are insanely hard to find. It's just two songs. Uh, we Ain't Sh and Drugs Are Good. Um, but I figured No FX is a punk band that I actually enjoy. You guys know I'm not like super huge into like traditional punk. I love pop punk. Um, but I, I'm not like a huge punk guy. Um, no FX, Bad Religion, you know classics dead kennedys I, I like that stuff but i'm not like super into like what um you know the stuff that's a little harder to get into a little more like intense in your face but um yeah ho fx 
Funny name. And the last one before we go to Q&A. I see people talking about Sufjan in the chat. I want to join the chat, but I'm just not there yet. I just hit myself in the face. Did you guys see that? Ow! All right. So this is part two and three. Nope. Part five and four. Where's the damn spine? Here we go. Five and six. I'm clearly drunk. Uh, so this is a hip hop project, um, called Magneto was right. Um, I just love the art on these Raz Fresco is the artist name. So it's like, you got all these like comic book style, like, you know, kind of like Zarface and MF doom do those like comic book style things. This is very much in the same vein. Um, this is, I think so far a six part series. And, um, I am, I have the first part and these two, and I'm missing, I believe two, three, and maybe four. Um, so I got to track those down, but yeah, it's just like a bunch of mixtapes that, uh, just like, I just love the Magneto art and I think he's a very solid MC and his beats are probably where it shines the most. If you guys like underground hip hop, um, uh, definitely check out Raz Fresco. Magneto was right. The series, the whole thing is really solid. Uh, the first one's still probably my favorite, which tends to happen, uh, with big series like that. Like, you know, um, I think like with West Side Gun, the Hitler Wars Hermes series, um, got worse as it, as it went on. I think the earlier installments were the best, but that being said, I, I would like to collect all of these, the splatter variants, um, because I just like the concept, uh, visually the art concept for the records. So let's go back to questions. I'm going to go and see what I've missed, but feel free to start throwing them at me. Um, we got through that shockingly fast. It's only been 30 minutes. Usually we're at like the 40, 45 minute mark at this point. So, uh, Let's answer some questions. Let me go back and see what I'm missing from above. Um, okay, so Tyler, this is how Sufjan began. He, he never listened to Sufjan, but he was at a shop today and he picked it up, a blind buy. Um, I don't know what it is yet. Carrie and Lowell. Yeah. Carrie and Lowell is plagued like all the Sufjan records for the most part with average sound it's a little noisy i don't understand why i don't want a bad talk asthmatic kitty because i think john the label owner is or the guy who runs the label is like extremely kind and i like him a lot i just don't get why all of their pressings tend to be subpar for someone like sufjan again this is just like what i was talking about with bon Iver and with the national and kanye like all these artists deserve these dead quiet audiophile pressings and they don't have them and I don't know how the labels can just be okay with it. Like, I'm not trying to say that I've, I have it all figured out, but I've put out, put out 12 records at this point and they all sound phenomenal. I mean, like if you guys have any records from the TMR label, you know, they all sound terrific. So why can't other labels do that? Like, what is the, what is the disconnect? I don't, I've done it. I've done it now 12 times. They all are dead quiet. Why why? Like, I, I genuinely want to know, like, why a label will hear... Like, I can't imagine hearing the Carrie and Lowell test press and hearing how noisy it is and being like, this is this is good. For this For this absolute masterpiece, one of the best albums maybe ever created, let's just let's just release this. Like, what? I, I just would love for someone to explain to me how so many of these labels can sit there and accept mediocrity. It, it is what it is. Uh, Tyler, Super Chat. Oh, your super chat was just catching me up on what I was talking about. Well, either way, if you haven't heard Carrie and Lowell, you will love it. It is an amazing record with or without a, an audiophile pressing. It is a beautiful record to listen to. Um, and yeah, I, I'm going to go back up to some other questions, but Dylan says there are some tracks on Carrie and Lowell that were recorded into an iPhone. Is that true? I feel like there were some tracks on The Greatest Gift that were on an iPhone. I don't think... He recorded any Karen Lowell to an iPhone. I could be wrong. But that being said, I don't need it to be hi-fi. I need it to not have background noise and ticks and pops and surface noise. Like, that's unacceptable for an album that's that quiet and sparse. I'm sorry. It just is. Uh, you know, it's it's embarrassing. 
I, I, I hate to be this that I hate to be that harsh, but if I can do it, you can do it. I don't know. Um You know she's saying that Carrie and Lowell's just okay. Man, I like you so much, Yanosh, but our music tastes could not be more different. <laughs> our overlap is like this, and then the Venn diagram's like this. Um, have I listened to my Aldous Harding album yet? No, it's in my short stack of to listen to. Obviously, you guys saw in my video recently, I have like seven, eight cubes worth of to listen to. Um, in addition to the ones right here, but it's in my short list. I will listen to it very soon. I'm very excited to listen to it. Um, did I listen to the new Palace album? I don't even know who Palace is. What uh, what kind of music do they do? You like your pressings of Illinois and Michigan. Um, Illinois is okay. It's actually it's pretty decent. Michigan, if I remember correctly, is also fairly noisy though. New Harry Styles album. Am I a fan? Um, I mean, like, I don't dislike Harry Styles. I can I can attest that a lot of his music is very catchy. I wouldn't buy it on vinyl. I don't think I need it for my collection. Um, but I I think he's, as a pop musician, very talented. I have not heard anything from the new album, though. You're not a lyrics guy. And if the music is this homogenous, you tend to get bored. That's fair. You know, what's funny, how I listen to music, I don't know if I've ever talked about this before in the channel, so you guys are getting like a little little taste into some who the, who the hell is Matt. Um, <clears throat> when I listen to music, I predominantly listen first, for the most part, to the sound. I listen to um, the instrumentation, the arrangement, the, the beat, the, the tempo. Like, I really, like, let that be the driving force as to whether or not I want to keep investing in the album moving forward. Like, obviously I hear the lyrics, but I don't really sit there and metabolize the lyrics on the first listen. Usually it's more of just like a sonic experience. And if I really like the sound of the record, that kind of encourages me to go back and re-listen and listen to the lyrics the second time and kind of hear what the songs were all about. Um, I feel like it's very difficult as a music fan to do both at the same time. Um, maybe that's just me. But I think that you give partial attention to either. It doesn't honor what they're trying to do. And then eventually, once you've given full attention to both, it kind of like unlocks the album. You're able to like appreciate it on all fronts. So what's unique about Carrie and Lowell for me is that I was able to appreciate the sound of it all the way through. But on first listen, I was the lyrics were so powerful for me that I couldn't help but hear every word and, and think about the stories he was painting with the albums and, or with the songs. And um, for me, that's what makes the album stand so high on my list of favorite records is that it took me out of my usual listening and it allowed me to find a way to do both at once, which for me is rare. So that's, uh, yeah, that's me just talking music. Um, did I ever listen to the Mod Sun album? Yeah, I did. It's good, not great. I didn't love it. There were some good tracks. There were some kind of cringy tracks. Um, the new Machine Gun Kelly album, I've given it one and a half listens. Uh, it's just, it's, it's just, it feels like B-sides to Tickets to My Downfall. Nothing is as good as anything on Tickets to My Downfall. Um, it, it's okay. It's not bad. It's just not great. Um, Nikki, you found the Virginia EP by The National. What a killer EP. Make sure you track down Cherry Tree EP also. Oh, I missed John's super chat. Did I see your note about Hayden Pedigo? Oh, I did see that email this morning and I've been boxing things and running around all day, so I have not responded, but thank you for the heads up. Um, I actually don't know that record. I only know the newest one, so I have to listen to it, or at least some of it first before I jump on it. But if it's half as good as his most recent record, I'll definitely want to grab it for sure. Um, have I ever gotten any bootlegs thinking it was legit pressing? 
No, it's pretty obvious to me when a record's a bootleg. I mean, there's a lot of telltale signs. You know, a lot of them will say, like, limited edition on the jacket, which is usually a sign that it's not real, um, or it's missing catalog numbers, or it's just, low, like, grainy and lo-fi, and, or it's a colored pressing of a record that very clearly doesn't have one, like Blonde. Um, so, no. My stance on Will Smith and Chris Rock is that I couldn't care less. Um... British rock band, enjoyable, in the same category as Gang of Youths. Interesting. Okay, I'll have to check out this Palace. Um, if you're comparing them to Gang of Youths, which is like maybe my favorite album of the year, um, it's high praise. Which variant of the Chili Peppers record did I order? I got the purple and yellow, or purple and gold, from their web store. Um, I'm glad I didn't dip more than once, because on first listen to the album, it was pretty forgettable. Um, not bad. Not great. Just kind of more of the same. There, there wasn't a single track that stands up against Ca Blood Sugar, Californication, By the Way, even Stadium Arcadium um, to me. But it's not a bad record. I'm hoping that this is kind of like the um, the start of their new era with Frushanti and maybe like they're going to get back in their groove and do something a little more, um, a little tighter next time, not an hour and 15 minutes. Um Whatever it is, like, just way too long. Way too many songs. Um, how hard is it to find RSD albums in the aftermarket? Um, it really depends on what the album is. So, Record Store Day albums don't just intrinsically have value because they're Record Store Day albums. It's like, the Across the Universe Beatles soundtrack um, from Record Store Day is extremely hard to find. But there are lots of soundtracks from the past few years that still are in stock at my local stores. So... It really depends. I wouldn't say that it, it, it it's impossible to answer that question. You just got to kind of look and see. Have I heard of these two smaller alt country artists, Nick Shoulders and Sierra Farrell? I have not heard of them. Although alt country is not my usual. Um. You know, she loved Seven Swans, and it's just as sparse. It is, but there's more experimentation musically on Seven Swans. It is sparse and stripped down, but, like, songs like Sister are, you know, very experimental compared to anything on Carrie and Lowell. Have I ever heard of Richard Houghton? What a, what a silly question, Tyler. Whoa! Oh, Frank... Frank with the with the massive super chat. Oh my goodness gracious! Dinner on you today. You buy me like a steak or sushi, my man. Thank you. Um, much appreciated. I need to bulk up before the the crazy uh, exodus of the records to the store tomorrow. The new UHQR for Hendrix. You got it because it's a favorite, and you only had a random pressing. You appreciated them announcing and releasing it a week ahead of it. It felt great to order and have it show up tomorrow instead of a month or a year. Yeah, I think that's a that was a great rollout for them for that. I did not purchase it. Um, I'm very curious to hear how it sounds. I've always been a casual Hendrix fan. Um, you know, I appreciate everything he's done, and I'm, I'm a fan of a lot of his songs, but I've never been, like, a Hendrix diehard. Um, but I'm very curious how the UHQR sounds compared to some of the other audiophile pressings of the record. So if you have a review of it, I'd love to hear it um, once you once you listen to it. I'm very curious. Um, I know you have a good setup, so you'll be able to ascertain if it's if it lives up to the hype or not. Um, give me some more UHQR Pink Floyd records. Let's go. Let's get Animals UHQR. I'm in. Um, what am I doing here? My thoughts on the supposed CD revival. Uh, I don't think it's real. I think that CDs don't really have a tangible value in terms of practicality or monetarily. Um, I think it might be people just trying to like sell their CDs and get the word out that CDs are coming back. They're not. Not yet. Eventually, maybe. But it's just it hasn't been gone long enough to justify. Uh, I mentioned I'm seeing Yard Act soon. Thoughts on the album? I, I enjoyed parts of it. I didn't love the whole album. It almost had like a little bit of like an of Montreal feel at times with some of like the chaos. Um, but definitely LCD sound system is one of the closest things without as much electronic elements. Um, just like kind of like delivery of the vocals and the lyrics. Um, I, uh, 
I want to see them live to see. I feel like they might be a better live band than they are um, just something to listen to. But maybe hearing them live would um, make the, make me appreciate the album more. Um, all four of the Sabbath Super Deluxe box sets have been amazing. Um, yeah, those all look pretty good. Um, in the collection buy that I just bought for the store about 600 records from the 60s, 70s, 80s. They have a Sabbath 4 in there, and I don't own that. So now I'm experiencing for the first time as a record store owner the urge to keep things from collection buys, <laughs> which I know will continue to be an issue as time goes on. Um, I may keep it. I might keep it. I, I've always wanted a copy, and um, if it's an early pressing and it's clean, I think I'm going to keep it. Have I heard of Nico Moon? I have not. Do I own a Madonna album? Yeah, I have True Blue. Um, I have a, I have one or two other ones. I'd like to own Bedtime Stories, to be honest. I just haven't picked it up. <clears throat> Did I hear the new M O O N single that dropped yesterday? Um, I I'm somewhat unfamiliar with their music, so I've heard the name, but. Um, I don't think I've actually sat and listened to it. Have I ever listened to Tinashe? Um, I have listened to her music. I think she's very talented. She's an amazing dancer. Um, I'm not a huge fan of her music. I don't think it's bad. It's just not... It's like the R&B kind of dance stuff that maybe I don't listen to as much. But I think she's amazing. She's insanely beautiful. Um, and she seems very nice and uh, driven and talented. I loved her Nardwar interview, if you guys ever watched that. Very, very charming. That That's probably what made me, like, put her on my radar as, like, someone really intriguing. Um, but, yeah. Um, will I sell bootlegs at my store? Um, not... I won't be stocking bootlegs... Like, I won't be buying wholesale bootlegs, but if a bootleg is in my collection or um, or if I buy it or if, like, someone brings in a bootleg, I'll probably put it up for sale. I'm not going to be, like, filling the bins with Frank Ocean Blonde, if that's what you're asking. It's only, it's it, you know, if there's a bootleg in the store, it's, it's going to be the only one, you know? Um, do I know Sylvia Perez Cruz? I don't, but I, I can picture her album cover in my head. I feel like I've seen the album cover, so I should probably check it out because I, I love Natalia Lafourcade a lot, so I'll check that out. Do I think Foo Fighters will continue to make music with a different drummer or stop and break up? <sighs> Man, that was such a such a tragedy, dude. Like, I saw Taylor play with um, Birds of Satan in a tiny bar in Burbank, California in like 2013 or 14, and Dave Grohl was there. He was like watching in the audience and talking to people. Um, he's just so talented and so full of life and he seemed like one of like the genuinely happiest people in, in rock music and music in general um, so huge tragedy do I think that they're going to keep making music I don't know um, I feel like I think they will because I feel like the justification that they will come to is that that's what Taylor would have wanted them to do and I think that that's probably true um, you know I think that they'll probably you know, how do you fill the shoes of such a legendary drummer who has so much history, but maybe they'll do, um, albums or tours with special musicians, like other popular drummers filling in kind of like as a tribute. I don't know. I don't think the Foo Fighters are gone. I think it'll be a little bit before we hear from them though. The Yard Act cover of Losing My Edge. I mean, that would be amazing for sure. Joy Crooks, gorgeous, jazzy R&B, sweet. Greatest Lollapaloozas, 2008, Radiohead in Rainbows, Kanye 808s, The National, Boxer. <sighs> that would have been probably my greatest festival of all time. I went to Lollapalooza two years later, but man, imagine if I went to that show. And what's funny is that 2008 was the year that I got into Radiohead and the year that I got into The National. So it's like, I would have gotten to see them as I was like just becoming obsessed with both of them. Um, 
and I, I'd been a Kanye fan for a little while before that. But yeah, those that was the year that I unlocked those bands for myself. So that would have been crazy. Um, do I think labels will follow Jack White's urging and get their own pressing plants? I think they'll have to, or we're, we're in serious trouble. Um, I think that we are facing a reality that's a possibility um, where new records will stop existing for a while because it's just going to be unsustainable from a price point and you know from it's going to be so expensive it's going to price people out and i think that the used market and like you know records from all the eras previous to now will be the what fuels the vinyl hobby because there isn't enough supply for the demand and unless the major plants move forward and they make or unless the major labels make their own plants like jack white is saying we're in a we're in a we're in trouble it's really you know i feel like the demand keeps going up which is awesome for the hobby but bad for the hobby at the same time so i don't know what artist do i want an album from kendrick lamar baby is there a way to compare an 80s turntable to a newer turntable um it's a really interesting question i don't know how to answer it i mean I feel like it's like it's not about the era it's about the quality of the machine and the needle and the cartridge and i feel like there's probably like different tiers and in those tiers are different tables from different eras um but i don't know if you can just like say oh this 80s table is better than the uh you know i don't know if you can just like do that kind of cross reference super chat tyler how did i start collecting and what made me start um, I feel like I've talked about this before, but I, I've always just been into collecting things. Um, I used to collect classic video games from like NES, Genesis, and all kinds of stuff like that when I was in high school. But um, yeah, I just, I've always loved music and I, I love the idea of having a tangible way to kind of experience my taste in music. Um, and it was just something I just did on a whim. It was like 2012 and I, I bought a turntable and I... Um, started getting records and I was really enjoying just putting records on and eventually it just kind of like became my main hobby and then I did the channel and it was kind of just all all uphill from there I guess you could say um, what's my opinion on bands or labels reissuing high in demand albums in limited numbers Hilltop Hoods The Calling originals go for 400 they were announced a reissue of 2,000 copies um interesting i don't even know hilltop hoods so i guess it's like if it's an artist that has like a big cult following 2000 copies is a pretty decent amount i mean how many wants does it have on discogs i think if i was a label and i was pressing something that was like super out of print um i feel like what i would do is look at the discogs and i would say oh how many people want this and assume that not all those people are actually going to buy it but that should be a good gauge give or take you know like maybe 75 60 five percent of that number of people that might purchase a reissue plus the other people that get swept into the hype um so yeah i don't know it's kind of a tricky thing if you're pressing like a cult classic because you could press it and it'll sell 2,000 copies in a day or you might press it and the demand isn't as high as you think and it's just a a small batch of collectors that are really really incensed about it and then um you end up sitting on a bunch right The National and Kanye are at the same festival at the same time slots. Who do I go and watch? Nikki, why you gotta make me answer that question? Why you gotta make me do that? <laughs> um, it depends on the era of music, to be completely honest. If it's The National now and Kanye now, I'd probably do The National because... Actually, you know what? I think the answer is always gonna be Kanye because he doesn't tour as much as The National does. And I think that uh, his shows are always so unpredictable that it'd probably be the choice i am going to see the national at red rocks i bought tickets to that so i'm very excited for that that'll be the highlight of my year i think you still have not listened to the national since you don't have your vinyl recommendation frank i told you you gotta buy alligator none of the records sound amazing just get alligator and sit down with a glass of scotch and just let it soak over you the lyrics and the beautiful compositions. 
Can I explain the record store day release concept? If you order the Gambino EP, how long will it take for you to receive it? Um, I mean, uh, first of all, what's up, Lithuania? Second of all, I don't really know how to answer that because record store day, you're supposed to go to the store to pick it up. So theoretically, you would get it right away. If you're ordering it from a store after the fact, it would take as long as it would take to get to you if you ordered any record. I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Have I ever listened to John Martin? I have not. Platinum 11, first time catching the stream. What is up? Thank you so much for being here. You caught the last five minutes, unfortunately, but this will be on the channel for you to go back and watch uh, after the fact. Is that Vinyl Rewind? Oh, my, my boy? My dude? Uh, Eric, tell me why our video we did at my old my old apartment, my old house, hasn't doesn't have hundreds of thousands of views. I think that's one of my favorite videos, the two of us talking about the albums that have influenced us as people. I think it's such a good video, and it got, like, okay views. It's like two vinyl titans. Anyway, I love that video, and I appreciate you doing it with me. Um, come visit Portland. You better come up to the store. Um, come up to the store, take a visit, and do a, we'll do a video together. It'll be awesome. Do I like any of the uh, Trojan Records reggae artists? I feel like uh, Dub Scrub is about to unsubscribe from me, but I am not a huge reggae fan. It's one of those genres that I, I've kind of struggled to get into, and it's even to the point where it's like if an electronic artist I love has a lot of dub stuff, I don't love the dub stuff. The only dub things I really appreciate, to be honest, are when Kruder and Dorfmeister kind of uh, slip into that. I think they do a really masterful job of still maintaining the down-tempo electronic elements. But, um, I, yeah, for me, it's like I, I kind of struggle with the dub, to be honest. John, with the possibly last Super Chat of the evening, am I a fan of Airborne Toxic Event? Um, that's a band that I've heard the name for my whole life, and I've never listened to them. I don't know anything about them, so I should probably take a listen. Self-titled, um... Is that the move? Is that the is that the one to do? Uh, Shane asks, how is the shop coming along? It's coming. Uh, I was saying earlier in the stream, tomorrow I am migrating all of the records from my house to the store. Um, thankfully, I have some friends that are going to help me, which is very kind. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's gonna it's it's coming. It's coming. Uh, there'll be lots of updates from the store, whether it's Instagram posts or stories or live streams or videos on here. Um, as it gets going, April's going to be a big month. I'm going to be there many evenings for sure. Um, oh, Tyler, could it be the first? Had to be the last. My man. Unless someone wants to try to beat him to it for that last Super Chat slot. Who, who's who got it? Who's got it? Um... Chris asks, how am I enjoying Portland, Oregonian here? I am enjoying it a lot. Um, last summer was my favorite summer of any place I've ever lived. It was so beautiful. Um, I'm really excited for summer again. I, I'm excited to go swimming on the river. Um, if I have time with the store, I'm worried that I'm going to be there so frequently I won't be able to uh, enjoy the, the summer, but we'll see. I might just have to like close randomly to go swimming every now and again. It's Portland. Right? Like, the hours can be flux. Um, so many questions. I feel like I gotta end this in a minute, but let's see. Um, Will this be my full-time job? Uh, it'll be one of them. I, I'm still going to work my other job, too, because I'm apparently crazy. Um, you know, store in all the time that I won't be working my job. It's going to be a, a give and take for sure. But my job, you know, until the store does well enough, the job, it's important I, I maintain my full-time job. Um, so it's going to be an interesting juggling act for sure. Um I should have a gone swimming sign on my door. I would love that. That's actually a great idea, Nikki. Where am I from originally? I grew up in Northern California, and then I lived in New Jersey, upstate New York for college, 
Then I went to New York City, then LA, then back to New York, and now I'm here in Portland. So just kind of ping-ponging across the coasts for my entire life. Uh, but thank you guys. This has been a really terrific live stream. You guys are wonderful. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I am going to be stressing out tomorrow big time with the move, but uh, I'll post a picture of the aftermath and it should be worth it. So um, thanks for joining me again and I'll do this again soon. Take it easy, guys.